Hi, I'm RJ. And I'm Karina. In this video, we'll talk about one of the most underappreciated Rolex watches out there, the Rolex Yachtmaster. Would you like to tell us the story of uh, the Yachtmaster? Because I know that it's not the first one you have. No, that's correct. Um, the first one I had, I bought in 2006 or 7, and um, I sold it later on in 2008 or 9. To uh, so I had it for a short time, but I really loved the watch. That was not a problem, but I wanted to have a Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, and yeah, I needed some funds for that. So basically, what I did is sold this watch to uh, to to purchase that Royal Oak, and then at some point I started to miss it, and. Um, it was until last September or October when uh, Rolex introduced the new Submariners. Uh, Bert and I went to uh, a friend of ours to take pictures of all the new Submariner models. And he was wearing the Yachtmaster. I fell in love with that watch again at that moment. And then I thought, yeah, I really need to have that Yachtmaster back. So then I sold my uh, uh, Rolex Submariner from 2010 that I basically never wore. And um, I also have a, a Rolex Sea Dweller, so yeah, for me there was also not really used to, to have those two watches. I'm not a Rolex collector or anything, I just wear them very occasionally. I collect Speedmasters, as you know, and wear them most of the time. Um, but yeah, no, nothing, nothing wrong with buying a Rolex uh, occasionally. What do you love the most about this watch? It's the concept behind this watch. Mm -hmm. What Rolex did back in 1992, they introduced uh, the Yachtmaster as a luxury version for the Submariner, basically. And it, it's, it's not a, a diving watch, it's more a watch to have uh, on your yacht or... <laughs> <laughs> on your wrist, on yeah, your yacht. Yeah, or in the yacht club. So because the bezel turns in both directions, that, that's what we call bidirectional. And um, with the diving watch, you want a unidirectional bezel that only turns one way. Um, and it's, it has a water resistance of 100 meters and not 300 meters like the Submariner. So in 92, Rolex introduced the Yachtmaster in full gold. It was an amazing watch. Perhaps a bit of a show-off piece, I don't know. And then in 99, they introduced this Rolesium one, which is steel and platinum. And Rolex calls that uh, Rolesium. And that's what I like. It's a very understatement watch. So it's not only an underrated watch or underappreciated mm -hmm. watch, it's also an understated watch because the platinum looks a bit like steel. But I really like it, especially the dial in sunlight. Exactly. Uh, you will see that it will really sparkle. And I was after exactly this one. This one is from 2004, and my first one was also from 2004. In 2007 or 2008, uh, Rolex changed the dial, the steel platinum dial. But the, the grain that you see in the platinum, it's, it's coarse. And from 2008 and later, it's, it's finer. And I like the more coarse look of the of the platinum dial basically, especially in, uh, in sunlight. So that's what I like. The model itself, it's, it's, not, it's not really a tool watch like a GMT or a Submariner or, or a Sea Dweller. So it's not that straight cut. It's a bit more round. It looks a bit like a Daytona case, um, which I like basically, except, well, there are no, no, no pushes on here. Then there's the, the bracelet that I like and enjoy. It's PCL, polished yes. center links, and it fits the watch. Normally on a tool watch like a, like a Submariner or a GMT Master, I'm not a fan of, of these PCL uh, uh, polished center links, but I think here it really uh, works well. And I like the contrast of the red second yeah. hand. So okay. it's a bit of a understated watch and perhaps that's also why that people don't like it as much. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I saw that watch and I had to have it. So then my search started a few months ago to, uh, to purchase one basically. Where people can get it? No, well, not new anymore. So the Yachtmaster is still in the collection uh, with a rhodium dial and with a blue dial. Uh, if you're talking about steel models, they retail for uh, around uh, 11,400 or 500, mm -hmm. and at least in the Netherlands. And, um, but the platinum dial has been phased out a long time ago. For me, what most important is with pre-owned Rolex yeah. is that the bracelet is still really uh, tight, so that there's no not too much uh, stretch on the on the bracelets. And for me, it's important that everything is there. So I have here the the box and the paperwork. Everything is there. And for me, that's important. The prices were all over the place. I think for a yachtmaster with nothing, so only the watch, you pay around six and a half thousand. 
and then it goes rapidly up if you have uh, everything there and also depending on the condition mm -hmm. of course so uh, I paid 8100 for this one I think from top of my head it's twice as much as what I paid in um, 2006 or 2007 mm -hmm. uh, I looked it up but yeah that 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 is what happened of course uh, with a lot of Rolex watches you see wait lists and so on and um, uh, the prices have gone up also pre-owned and yeah I'm, I'm fine with that it hurts only a little bit as I said I, I sold my uh, my Rolex Submariner for that and I made a good profit on that as well so that that went into this uh, Yacht Master again for me it's not so much about that but just I like this watch better than a Submariner totally what do you think I love it I must admit that uh, I love the design I love the dial the way how it looks in the sun but also as you said in the uh, in our office but uh, what I like the most is that it suits uh, also uh, my wrist very well. I mean, you can have it in different variation, case variation, like 25 you millimeters. Have, yeah, you have 29 millimeters yeah. and there's 35, which is then called mid-size. And I yeah. think it's uh, one of the series that I often watch, Two and a Half Men with Charlie Sheen. I think he was wearing a 35 Smaller? millimeter. Okay. Okay. And, uh, it didn't look bad, I have to say. I don't know how tall he is, but... It didn't, didn't look bad at all, yeah. I have no idea how to yeah. do it. <laughs> do you uh, like him? <laughs> <laughs> well, as an actor, and he had some, some, some nice stuff uh, afterwards, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. Totally. But no, I, I, yeah, I like it. I, I can imagine. What would you buy? Would you buy a 35 millimeter or 29 or a 40? I think I would go for 40 millimeters because basically uh, this is... A, dive watch mm -hmm. so uh, i expect from a dive watch to be bigger than you know like other watches yeah you have you want to have good visibility exactly yeah. you should not dive with it eh? it's uh, no 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 but surface but, uh, okay <laughs> yeah exactly Surfing surf or okay, swimming yeah. yeah exactly yeah it's more than uh, yeah. enough for me yeah uh, what about the date window i like it uh, it's very personal um I think there's only one sports model that has a date and not a Cyclops, and that's the Sea Dweller, um, which I also like a lot. I, I have it in my collection. Um, it was actually my first Rolex sports model mm -hmm. that I got in 2002 or 2003. But I also like the Cyclops. For me, it's, it's part of the signature, basically, of the design of a Rolex sports watch. And I know that uh, Bert, you can't see him, but he's taking uh, video and, and pictures. He, uh, he has his uh, Rolex Submariner 1680, vintage one. I think from uh, his birth year or 77, 78, he's uh, putting up his thumb. And um, he put a different crystal on it. And the original one comes with a Cyclops and he put a, like a flat crystal on it. So it looks like a, more or less like a sea dweller. And I like that look, but I also have to say, I don't mind the Cyclops. Um, I also know that some people removed it with a, with a razor blade. Okay. They ticked it off, but not to advise to do it yourself. Yeah, don't do it. <laughs> But um, I, I don't mind. Do you, do you dislike it? Yeah, I do. Okay. Unfortunately, <laughs> I do. For me, it's too chunky and it looks a bit weird, but I, I'm also the person who doesn't like date windows at all. So. Yeah, for me, date is something very practical or functional and a lot of yeah. watches, I don't like a date, but on this one, yeah, it's yeah. part of the design. Here it's very practical, yeah, I yeah. must admit for the Yardmaster it was a bit of a nostalgia, nostalgia as well I had one I loved it and I traded it and I sort of regretted it when I saw it afterwards on other people's wrists and um, I'm happy that I uh, could find one and um, yeah yeah it's, it's, it's one of these underappreciated one. Rolex watches that has the, the um, advantage that because of this underappreciation mm -hmm. you can find them for relatively sharp prices yeah, as, as I said between six and a half and and 10k they're all over the place and exactly. um, it's cheaper than a, than any Submariner and GMT and I always wondered a bit basically because um, it has always been the case with mm -hmm. the Yardmaster that you could find them as cheap or, or as cheap but for the same price or perhaps a bit lower than a Submariner or a GMT while with this watch you get a bit of platinum yeah it has some added value I think precious metal it, it adds something to, to the watch and also it's great that people can easily get it yeah there's, yeah. Uh, there's tons of them on, uh, on because, websites like Chrono24 yeah. and also a new Yardmaster you can easily get one for retail yeah. I guess uh, I looked up the, the, the prices and they're so close to retail yeah totally yeah so no it's a it's a lovely watch and besides the Yardmaster 
Um, there are some other models that are underappreciated, like the Milgauss, even the Explorer 2. You can find them for uh, for uh, good, uh, good good prices. And um, I think it's a matter of the, the herd following the people that love uh, Submariner or Daytona or GMT Master. And even they just are now with a wait list. Yeah. Uh, while there are so many more Rolex watches out there that I think deserve proper attention. And even our friends from the Amsterdam uh, 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 vintage watches, Jasper Leivering, he only deals in vintage watches, but he also makes an exception for the Yardmaster because he, uh, he said, well, it's a, it's a strange Rolex and that's why I like it. And I have to agree with him there a bit. It's a bit of a weird Rolex and I have a, a thing for quirky watches and I think the Yardmaster is just one of those quirky watches that, um, that I like. So. Um, if you like a Yardmaster, go out there, go to Chrono24 or other uh, um, pre-owned watch uh, websites and there are tons of them out there. Just a matter of finding one in the right condition, perhaps in the, uh, with box papers, whatever you want. I think it's easy to find one for, yeah. for a good price. And I think in terms of Rolex uh, offers, there's not much that uh, can beat a Yardmaster. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. Bye.